Hey, and welcome back to the Troglodyte channel. Today, as you can see, I've made myself tiny in Minecraft, and we're gonna... Oh, oh no, a Reddit mod. Don't put me in that jar, no! <clears throat> anyway, as I was saying, for this video, I've made myself tiny in Minecraft. That is, 2.2 blocks tall. And it's not just my size that has changed. Being this small affects pretty much every aspect of the game. My attack range and damage is greatly reduced. You can see this cow here taking more than three hits from a diamond sword to kill. And I'm missing him sometimes when I normally wouldn't be because of the range difference. And being just 0.2 blocks tall, I can't even jump onto stairs. Not even close, actually. I'll be much slower at mining blocks. And I can't even hit the block directly above me, I don't have the range for it. And being so tiny, I take 10 times the damage, which means basically any attack from anything is gonna kill me in one hit. And throughout this playthrough, I run into so many issues with mobility, one of which being I cannot even get out of the water once I've gotten into it. And getting around just the general world takes forever because being one tenth the size of a normal character, it takes me 10 times as long to walk anywhere. Can you beat the game under these circumstances? Let's get into it. Alrighty, here we go. Oh man, this is so slow. I could tell right off the bat that this was going to be a long playthrough. Oh man, that is a massive pig. Reminds me of my ex-girlfriend. I had the obvious initial goal of finding wood, but there was none even close. So I was basically meandering around. And I ended up in the water, and I unknowingly sealed my fate. I was unable to get out. I was trapped, so I decided to go deeper into the cave to take a look and see if there was anything I could get that could, you know, help me escape this situation. Oh, and being this small, there's no fall damage at all. That was nice to know. Well, the only way out is death. Here we go. Haha, <laughs> look guys, giant ass. Okay, so after that first death, I realized it was bad to go down. So my new strategy was to basically dig up enough dirt to where I could just bridge where I needed to go, and hopefully I would find wood before I needed to go up. But just when I had found wood, I encountered my first hostile mob of the playthrough. And it turns out, they can't see you from very far away when you're tiny. You have to be very close for them to notice an attack. It had been a great struggle so far, but I was eventually able to find some wood, and I opened up the crafting book to see if there was any possible thing I could craft that could help me move up blocks at all. After a bit of thought, I realized that ladders were going to be the only way that I was going to move up blocks when being so small. This was a huge realization, and now that it was feeling pretty possible to do this. After gathering some more resources, my next goal became to find a village, which are great for gathering even more resources. Plus, I was really hurting for food at this point, and there was no reasonable way of getting food other than a village. I got super lucky in spotting a village relatively quickly after I started looking, and so I started the long walk towards it. The village looked super close from far away, but man, it took a while to walk on these tiny legs and get there. After like half of an in-game day, I finally arrived at the village and discovered there are two blacksmith houses, and it's a very large one. I knew this is where I was going to be settling down. I got fairly lucky with the two blacksmith's chests in the village, as they between them had 12 obsidian which would allow me to make a portal without doing any bucket shenanigans. Out of my bed, tall head, we know I'm the important one. And since I had slept here, a casualty or two along the way was no big deal. Since I already had the obsidian for a nether portal, the only thing I needed to make it actually to the nether was a flint and steel. So I started mining right beneath my base to go find some. Look at the little one high mine I made. It's very surreal as a longtime player of the game to see this. It just feels so cozy. It took a considerable amount of time, but I was eventually able to get myself some iron. And with that iron and the obsidian from earlier, I was able to make a nether portal and make my way into the nether. So 
spawning into the nether for the first time, I see I'm in one of these teal forest biomes, which is probably the best place I could possibly be. I don't have to deal with too many hoglins and piglins this way, and I potentially have a source of ender pearls because many endermen spawn here. But I was not so lucky as to find a nether fortress right off the bat, so it was going to take a little more effort to get there. And since I die in one hit to almost any attack, I decided the safest thing to do would be to build a really long bridge. So I started to doing that. Concurrently, I started leveling up some villagers to get some better gear. The only problem was they kept moving into the nether and eventually dying, so that was an issue. I also went around and collected the tax from the village I'm living in. Got some good food and a saddle, back to that later. Haha <laughs> guys look, giant pussy. Ooh, and giant cock. This village has something for everyone. Oh, and I also found the dumbest villager ever, trying to get to this blast furnace, but simply not comprehending the possibility of walking around the cobblestone. This villager is the average Twitter user. Oh my god, he still couldn't figure it out after I took away the cobblestone! Oh, and he wasn't the only one either. Half the village started moving into the nether. This really was a village of troglodytes. Oh, and then I found these two weirdos over here getting it on in the nether. This has got to be the third most weird Minecraft-based kink that I've ever seen. Look at him go at it! Oh my god, he looked at me and then just went right back to it. Ugh. Minecraft is limited in animations, but one can use their imagination. This villager doesn't realize it yet, but I'm gonna crawl up his butthole in the middle of the night and eat him from the inside out. Anyway, back to the objective. I still hadn't found a nether fortress, and it was gonna take my tiny ass a long time to get there, so I needed to get started. So I started bridging over a lava ocean when I noticed the endermen were having a party on an island just next to me. And that got me thinking that I could go down there and cheese them for some easy ender pearls, but this was not the case at all. They were able to kill me even when I was standing under a one high uh, little table that I had built. I even tried hiding under a bed and burning them from the inside, and uh, that didn't work either. So I was going to have to figure out something else when it came to getting ender pearls. So it was back to bridging for me. And one of the other methods for getting ender pearls that I'm aware of is gathering gold and trading the piglins. So I started mining some gold. And this was actually easier than I expected. I was actually able to accumulate a decent amount of gold in not so much time. So I went to go trade with the piglins, and luckily some had spawned on the bridge that I had made. And something to note, their range for seeing the gold is actually higher than their range for seeing my tiny character. So that made approaching them easy, but getting away from them after trading very difficult. Seeing them all scramble for the gold like that and hearing the snorting sounds they were making made me kind of anxious, so I started to make a break for it after picking up that string. And nope, couldn't get away. Oh, quick side note. I edit out most of the boring transition times where I'm just running around for 20 minutes straight, but I just want you to understand how long it would take to get from place to place. This right here is running speed. I had to cut dozens of hours of just tiny me running from place to place. Getting back to where I had died at, the stuff was still there, but somehow the piglins were not. I don't know what happened to that, but that was very convenient for me. And now, having three ender pearls from what they traded, we now have a proof of concept for getting the ender pearls as a tiny person. It is possible. Now I need to prove that getting a blaze rod is possible. But ender pearls weren't the only thing I got from the piglins. I also got string, and that gave me an idea. Using the string to make a fishing rod, and using the saddle that I found in the village earlier, I could direct a strider in whatever direction I wanted, and that would hopefully greatly speed up the process of finding a nether fortress, because it was taking insanely long at this point. It was now time to go find a strider, the special ed kid of Minecraft mobs. And they were a little uncooperative at first, it was tough to get close to one. Come here, Sped. I got some glue for you. You want this tasty glue? I was eventually able to mount one, and oh boy, they are fast. Much, 
much faster than the speed I was moving at as this tiny character. With this guy on my side, I was going to find another fortress in no time. I have rarely ever mounted a strider in my Minecraft career, but after riding one in this playthrough, I gotta say, I definitely recommend it. It speeds up the process of finding another fort so quickly, and it's fun to ride around on him. You can even boost him to go even faster by right clicking with the uh, mushroom on a stick. I really underestimated this guy, he's fantastic. I saved so, so much time by getting the strider. I found the fortress within like 15 minutes of mounting the strider. It was great. This achievement got me 19 levels in one go. This was insane. Anyway, I soon dismounted and made a severe error in judgment here. Uh, yep, I lost my fishing pole, my strider, but thankfully I did save the coordinates for the fortress so I was able to then build a long bridge back to it. And not all of it was a bridge either, some of it was a fun little one by one tunnel, which is neat because I wouldn't be able to do that in any other playthrough. The fort was 500 blocks away on the x-axis and 400 blocks away on the z-axis, so I don't know what that translates to in like hypotenuse math or whatever, but it was the equivalent of at least 5,000 blocks away in a normal playthrough, and imagine walking 5,000 blocks in the nether, dying in one hit to any attack. It was rough. But I eventually made it there and started slowly making my way into the fort. I started to take a look around and I almost immediately died. After a tedious 20 minute walk back, I made it back to the fort and started encasing this blaze spawner to build some sort of structure wherein I could cheese the blazes. And I made a mistake while doing that. But I clutched up to save myself 20 minutes of running. I am truly the gamer of all time. I climbed back into my little blaze farming nest and I almost immediately was killed. The blazes can spot my tiny player model from much further away than regular mobs, which was extremely inconvenient for trying to kill them. To make things even more difficult, the bow doesn't even work properly when you're this size. I was able to hit maybe one out of 10 arrows and it was going to take tons of arrows to kill them because my damage is reduced so much. I was getting frustrated with that, so I came up with a new plan. I had earlier spotted some pumpkins across the river from the village that I lived in, so I was going to build an iron golem and have the golem kill the blazes for me. To do this, I was going to need 36 iron and a pair of shears because you have to shear the pumpkin to make it a jack-o'-lantern and actually spawn the golem. So I needed 38 iron essentially, so it was time to get mining. So after several hours of mining, climbing my way out of the cave, smelting the iron, and then eventually making my way back towards the nether fortress, I was finally in position to spawn the iron golem and start killing these blazes. I got everything ready to spawn the golem and I was ready to pull the trigger. And I died almost immediately but the blazes didn't start spawning until you get close, so I was able to get back to my iron golem, and he was able to start killing blazes. The only catch was, blazes don't drop blaze rods if they are killed by an iron golem, so this entire exercise was pointless. Okay, new plan. This time I needed to get some tamed wolves to kill the blazes, because they will actually drop the blaze rod if a tamed wolf kills them. So after over three hours of wandering around the overworld, I eventually found some wolves. And I had gathered up every bone that I could muster at this point, and I was tr going to try to tame as many wolves as possible. And it worked. I was able to tame this wolf, and then I tested him out on my mom. Oh, I mean this giant cow. Yeah, go get her. He killed her. Good boy. So I went to go tame some more wolves and they were quite stubborn. Their walking pattern makes them walk really far away just randomly, at least far away from my tiny perspective. I ended up able to tame five wolves with the bones that I had. Okay doggies, listen up. This strategy better work because I'm like 10 hours invested into it at this point, so you gotta get those blazes. So after no joke, two and a half hours of running back to the blazes. A journey which only two of the five wolves made it back, 
I was able to execute this strategy. And they were able to kill me one blaze, but he didn't drop a blaze rod and the blaze finished the two wolves off shortly after that. So I'm 30 hours into trying to get a blaze rod at this point and I haven't even gotten one. And I could dedicate 60 more hours to getting more wolves and executing the strategy and maybe it would work, but I just simply don't have that in me. The answer to the question in the title, can I beat Minecraft as a tiny person? No, I cannot. This challenge is simply too horrendously tedious for me, but I'm still curious if this is technically possible, so I'm going to cheat for the rest of this video and see if it is theoretically possible to do this in survival mode while tiny. So I'm going to be giving myself the best gear and wolves and see if I'm able to beat the game. I'm still going to be playing in survival mode, but anything that requires tedious grinding like enchanted bows, diamond armor, diamond gear, or wolves I'm going to be giving to myself. And it turns out that even with full diamond armor, fully enchanted with protection 4, or fire protection 4, I actually tried both, the blazes still kill you in one hit when you're tiny. Like I am literally cheating and this was still excruciatingly difficult, if that tells you anything about how hard this is. And my army of wolves was doing well. They were killing the blazes and the blazes were dropping the blaze rods, but it was extremely dangerous to ever try to grab one. And the wolves unfortunately don't attack the blazes by default. You have to hit them or they have to hit you first. And if they hit you, you die. So you basically have to hit them first. Oh, and did you know that blazes have a melee attack that does physical damage? So not even potions of fire protection protect you from them. They can kill you in one hit when you're tiny, no matter what. It took kind of an absurd amount of time given the fact that I was cheating, but I was eventually able to get myself enough blaze rods to confidently leave the nether for good in this run. And what a relief it was. So with enough blaze rods, now all I needed was ender pearls. So I decided to use the most underhanded strategy to get ender pearls possible. And that was leveling up a cleric villager until he sold them. It's not the most glamorous way to get ender pearls, but it is safe for a tiny person. Now that I had both blaze rods and ender pearls, I was able to start the trek towards the stronghold. After what was another probably equivalent to 9,000 block journey, the eyes of Ender started to turn a different direction, and it was time to start digging. I employed the very well-known and safe strategy of digging straight down, and in a short amount of time, I was able to make it to the stronghold. I set up a bed because, of course, I didn't want to make the 9,000 block trek back here from my original base. And after doing that, I saw a silverfish behind me, and I knew that meant the silverfish spawner was nearby, which means the end portal is nearby. So I loaded up those eyes of Ender and made my way into the portal for the final showdown between Giant Dragon and Tiny Person. And right off the bat I was on an island so I started bridging my way over. And this of course resulted in my eventual death once the Ender Dragon spotted me. And this fight very quickly devolved into a battle of attrition where I would run back, grab my stuff, make it like 10 blocks farther, and then the Ender Dragon would kill me again, and the cycle would repeat. Oh, and just for fun, I tested whether full diamond armor would protect me from dying in one hit. It doesn't. I was undeterred, though. Bit by bit, I was making my way up the first pillar, and I was shortly able to blow up the first beacon. Well, after a dozen or so casualties, that is. Yeah, I died a ton in this fight. It was not pleasant at all. It was tedious, and the Ender Dragon almost appeared to be taunting me at some points. Oh, but the one good thing about being tiny, the lack of fall damage, came in very useful when I was dropping from the highest pillar to the lowest one. One eternity later. I was eventually able to kill the final pillar and now the ender dragon was unable to heal. 
But now the question becomes, how do I damage her? And for that, I have a super secret strategy I've codenamed 9-11. Why is it called 9-11, you ask? Well... Yup, that's right. The most reliable way I've found of damaging the Ender Dragon while tiny is bed bombings. Killing myself, but also damaging the Ender Dragon in the process. And there's definitely an aspect of timing to it that I didn't fully understand and I failed the timing some of the times. And if you time it perfectly, you get much better damage, so I was definitely aiming for that. But in any case, as long as I can successfully do damage to the Ender Dragon, she can't heal, so this is possible. It was just a matter of willpower at this point. I need to gather up enough beds and grind it out. I did briefly try to hit her with a bow, just to speed up the process because the beds thing was extremely slow. But with the way arrow drop works when you're tiny, it's completely infeasible to ever hit her for consistent damage. So bed bombing it was, I was just going to have to buckle down and repeatedly bomb her. Near the end I was doing much better with the timing, you can see the big damage on that one. The key was to blow it up when her head was right above the bed, that gives you like bonus damage or something. And if the Ender Dragon is the Twin Towers, then today is 9-11, because she got bombed to death! But oh, I didn't get the achievement. I really hope the game isn't glitched and I can't beat the game somehow. So I ran my tiny butt all the way back over to the end portal and discovered that yes, the portal did open and it is technically possible to beat the game as a tiny person. Even though I didn't get the free the end achievement, that was weird. But there you have it though, it is technically possible to beat Minecraft when you are extremely small, 0.2 blocks tall that is. Hey friends, I hope you enjoyed this presentation from the Troglodyte channel. Since you made it this far, I hope you would consider liking this video, it would really help me out a lot in, uh, you know, YouTube boosting my content and whatnot. And subscribe to the channel for more nonsense like this. I have a lot of Minecraft modded videos planned, and if you like this video, you'll love what's coming. So please subscribe. Bye now. See you in three weeks. Oh no. Oh no. Reddit mod, no. What are you going to do to me? No. No. Stop it. Don't put that in there with me. Oh no.